Sorry, good morning, everybody. Everybody feel out of quiet? It's not a great week. Had a good weekend. Everybody got good plans for the weekend? What for? Who's going hunting? Nope, it's over. Wow. <laughs> oh, across this direction. Lord, help me. All right. Thank everybody for coming this morning. Let's go ahead and start in prayer. Father, we thank you for this morning, Lord. And Father, we come before you, Lord, as your servants, Lord, knowing, Lord, that we need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. We depend upon you, Father. Father, we need you for everything in our life, Lord. Lord, we just ask you, Lord, to open our hearts and our minds, Lord. Lord, I pray for our teachers here today, Lord. Just thank you for them, Lord. We just ask you, Lord, to fill them with your spirit, Lord, to help them teach, help them guide, Lord, and be examples. Father, we thank you for them and ask you to bless them, Lord. And Father, and every student here, Lord, we thank you for them. For they are precious to us, Lord. And Father, we just ask for you, Lord, for our teachers here today, and Lord, we just thank you for them, Lord, for this action, Lord. And show them your spirit, Lord, to help them teach you, need you, and guide, Lord, and be examples. Father, we thank you for them and ask you to bless them. And ask you, Lord, Father, and every student here, Lord, we thank you for them. For they are precious to us, Lord. And Father, we just ask for you, Lord, and our teachers here today, and our Lord, thank you for them, Lord, and ask for them, Lord, and show them your spirit, Lord, to help them teach, and guide, Lord, and be examples, Father, we thank you for them, and ask for them, Lord, and ask for them, Lord, and ask for them, thank you for them, Lord, and ask 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 for them,
Why, why were you chosen? You and I. Why were we chosen? Well, let's read Colossians 1. And Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the, the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and the, and the faithful brethren in Christ, which are at Colossia, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Jesus Christ and the love which you have to all the saints, for the hope which is laid up for you in heaven, wherefore ye heard before in the word of truth of the gospel which is coming to you. It is in it is in all the in the whole world and bringeth forth fruit. And it does also in you, since the day you heard of it, and knew of the grace of God in truth. And ye also learn of Ephesus, our dear brother, fellow servant, who who is for ye a faithful minister of Christ, who also declared unto us your love in the spirit. It is the it is the will what is God's will for your life? And and we're going to start in verse in verse one. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Why was Paul chosen? Why are you chosen? Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, because it was the will of God. He tells us that in verse one. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God. He's telling us a whole lot here. The only way I can be an apostle of Jesus Christ is because God, He willed that for my life. The only way you can be a servant of God is because He willed that for your life. And He's explaining that to them. If you ever wonder what is your will, God's will for your life, you ever wondered what is your purpose? Now you know. Now you know your purpose. And that is to be a servant of God. That is the will of God for your life. And we know in John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever will, that is God's will for your life. Whoever believes in Him shall have everlasting life. That is God's will for your life. To give you eternal life. Now Colossians is one of four letters Paul wrote while in prison. At that, known as the prison epistles. He also wrote three other books. Ephesians, Philippians, and Philemon in prison. Now Paul was an incredible man. An apostle by the will of God. So why did God choose Paul? Did you ever think about that? Why did God choose this man? Knowing who he was before. And then when God met him on the road of uh, Damascus, yeah, he changed his life. Was it because of his great intellect? Was it his unbearable will and drive? Or was it his heart and passion because Paul had all of those. All of these things would be useful in the hand of the potter once they were submitted unto the will of God. But they are not the primary reason which Scripture says Paul was chosen. Paul himself tells us why he was chosen. He was chosen and let's turn to 1 Timothy. We'll come back to it. I just want to read why, why do we know why Paul was chosen? Same reason you were and I were. And he goes on to tell us in verse 15, 1 Timothy 1 15. This is a faithful saying and worthy to all uh, expectation that Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. He's telling us of whom he, he was the chief of sinners. How be it for this cause? I attain mercy that in my first 
Jesus Christ, may show forth all long suffering for a pattern to all them which should hereafter believe on him to everlasting life. Paul was chosen to the will of God to be an example to us, to, to all the world, on how him being the chief of sinners, the worst of the worst, the ones that you think that would never be saved. And we could think of some people that, man, I don't see how they're going to be saved. It's, it's impossible. But Paul was the example to the whole world. The worst of the worst, God chose him and changed his life. And now he's writing this letter back to the Colossian people, telling them about this great hope and the will of God. Paul was saved as an outstanding example throughout all ages that the most unlikely person could be saved. The foremost sinner can be saved. The worst of the worst can be saved. That is the primary reason God chose him. To be an example to others of God's amazing grace. The grace of God and the, the gospel of grace was the key message. He opened and closed all his personal letters with mentioning grace. How do we define grace? It is God's unmerited favor. He didn't deserve that. He deserved death for what he's done. Just like you and I, we deserve death for our sins. The sins we commit against God. The Bible said the wages of sin is death. And we deserve that. But God's unmerited favor met us. Wherever He met us at, if you accepted the Lord as your Savior, that was the God's will for your life. And now that you're living for Jesus Christ, He wants to change you. And be, so you can be an example, just like Paul was, to the whole world about His, about his grace. That is the whole message of uh, Colossians. And he's writing this letter to the, to the Colossian church, letting them know that this is the will of God. And he's encouraging them. I was the worst of the worst, and he saved me. And he saved me. Hallelujah. Do you know what the will of God is for you in your life? You know God wants to save you. Now you have it. Now you move on to the next step, being sanctified. And this, this is the process where we find out, we find out about ourselves, right? We all know our faults and our, and our downfalls and the things that, uh, that, uh, that, that, that tempt us and we, we're not strong in and, and, and we're living this life. We still, we still have our faith in Jesus. I just want to share some bad news with you that, uh, that, that, that sin nature is there, like Pastor was teaching on, on Wednesday night. You know, that, that sin nature is there, and it, ha it has to be dormant. It has to be put to sleep, right? And as you're growing up, that, uh, Satan is coming to tempt you, and he wants to bring that sin nature back up, right? And as young children, you're, you're starting to learn. Uh, probably, uh, I want to say probably 90% of y'all have been raised in church from from birth, and y'all really didn't experience the world and know, and know the, the, the temptation of the world, but now you're teenagers, y'all are learning about the things of the world, and they're tempting y'all, and they, and, 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 and they, they want to draw y'all in, but now, now y'all have parents that are constantly praying for y'all, parents that are bringing y'all to church so y'all can learn, y'all can learn uh, how, to, how to fight the enemy, how to, uh, how to, uh, Say no, and how to. Uh, the, the only thing you can, you can't do it on your own. It's only in the faith that you have in Jesus Christ. That's the only thing you can do. It's by, it's by having Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life, and that is the only hope that you have, and I have, because the thing is coming like with a, a, a lion, right, to devour a roaring lion. He wants to kill and destroy. You are very young, innocent lives. But you have the opportunity as young kids to know the Lord. Stay away out of the world. You know, uh, we see it on uh, television. We see it on our phones. We see it uh, uh, in, in, 
right here in our neighborhoods, for all the things going on in this world. The robberies, the drugs, the, the killings, all these things are going on around us. And Satan's drawing y'all, he wants to draw y'all into that. And that's why we, we, we stand here every Friday, every Wednesday, every Sunday, and Friday, constantly, constantly preaching the gospel, driven it into us. It's just not y'all you. It has to be done to us. As, as, uh, you know, as the saints of God, we constantly have to hear the gospel. We constantly have to pray for one another, love one another. That, that's the only hope we have, is to love one another. I mean, you, you look to your left and your right. Look, these are your friends that you are with right now. And, so, and some will be uh, for the rest of your lives. Some will part not, not because you're in it, because something happens in life and you're moving or all these things. But these are the friends that God has placed in your life to grow close to, to encourage, to, uh, to help out, to pray for. These are the ones, God. You, you're all of them. And y'all have friends outside of church. Y'all have friends uh, uh, in your families. They're all there to help you grow in the Lord. Moms and dads praying for you. And this is the hope that Paul was sharing with the Colossal Church. He was telling them, I stand here today only because of the grace of God. And that's the only reason you're here. That's the only reason I, I'm here. Because of the, the sin that I have committed against God has separated me from Him. And at a young age, my parents taught me that. They taught me how to reconcile myself back unto God. They taught me. They brought me to church and told me about Jesus. And it happened at a young age, very young age. But I, I, did, I couldn't live off my parents' faith. I had to reach a point in my life. And a lot of you guys have got to that point or fit you to get to that point where you're going to have to make the decision upon your, on your own self. Mom and dad is not going to be there for you all the time. So what they're putting and pouring into you, into you now, take advantage of it, God. Take advantage of it. Live for the Lord while you can, while it's easy. As you fix it to get into life where the situation is going to be different. Trials will be harder. Right now you have a chance to build yourself up in the faith. Right now, to know, to know about God's grace. Mom and dad's been telling me, don't go that way. I did that. And look what it done. The consequence of all this. But most of all, knowing that what Jesus did for you is the reason why we live for him. He sent his son and he died on the cross. For your sins, that, that, so that way you don't have to die to be separated from God. God's going to tell, tell you that it's never going to stop. The preaching will never stop. You're constantly here. As long as you're here because your parents say you have to go to school and you have to be in church, you're going to do it. But there's going to come a point in your young life you're going to say, I don't want it. And I pray that's not happening. To none of y'all, not one of y'all. I pray that y'all desire to be at church. I pray y'all desire to be in a Christian school. I pray y'all desire and, uh, to love the Lord more and more every day. That's what Paul was explaining to them. He was telling them about the, I see this love that you have. This faith that you have. And you have a chance to build yourself up in the most holy faith. In the Lord. And that's what Paul was telling them. The next thing that I want to talk about in Colossians is the hope of heaven. You know, a lot of times we don't, as as, as I know as children, I know when I was a kid, I really didn't think about it until my parents talked about it. Right? Until so they talked about heaven. And they, and they they constantly would bring it up. They would have to constantly do it for me to think about it. But if I, if I wasn't, you know what I was doing? I was playing with toys, riding bikes, doing this and doing that. That's what children do, right? They don't think about it much. So I just want to remind you of the reason that Paul was so excited about his conversion. 
about what happened to him because of that hope that it gave him. It gave him a hope. In verse 3, he says, uh, he's also writing, he says, we give thanks to God and to the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. Since we heard of your faith in Jesus and the love which ye have for all the saints, pay attention to that. The love that they have for the saints. How much love do you have for your brother and your sisters? I know you're physical brother, you love them, right? And as brothers and sisters, y'all fight, y'all you know, throw down one day, the next day, y'all hug each other. Right? Do you throw them out the house? Do you throw your brother and sister out the house after you fight? No. You, you find a way to work it out. You find a way to love one, right? Same thing here among uh, Christian brothers and sisters. Yeah, we might have a dispute or an argument or something, but we work it out. We, we figure out a way to love one another. We figure out a way to work it out. And that's what Paul seen in them. He said, I seen. He's seen the love which you have for all the saints. Can people outside of this church look in here and say, I see the love that they have for one another? Can they see that in you know, in me and in the other, the other brothers in the church and sisters? Can they see that in us as a Christian church? The love that we have for one another? Although the, you know, we know the devil comes in and tries to make us fuss and fight and dispute, but we learn how to work it out. We learn how to love despite the things that you would say about me or done to me or whatever happens in, in arguments as children or teenagers. We learn to work them out. And the only way we can do that is knowing that what Jesus did for you and I is the only way we can learn to love somebody else. Knowing all the things that I've done against God, the sins that I have done, and He still loves me. No matter what I've done, no matter what you have done, He still loves you. Just like a mom and dad, no matter what you do as, as their sons and daughters, they're going to love you through it. They're going to love you through it. They're going to pray you through it. They're going to be there for you. Just like my parents, they're still there for us today. All the children, they don't love one more or less. They love us all. And, and, and some have done uh, very bad things, but the love I've seen my mom and dad had for, for, even through that, they still love them. And, and as in one mouth, they, they're saying they hate them. They don't like to get out of their life, but they're still there. They're still there. And that's what a mom and dad, the love for you, that's love. That's the love of God. And that's the same love that Jesus gave to us. That's when He gave, gave to Paul. When He changed His life. All knowing all the things He's done bad. All those things. He's saying. He realized that somebody had loved Him. And that changed Him. Now Paul had visited this church himself but had heard two things about them that it brought joy to him. Two things that made him thank God for them. Simply, simple things like faith and love, which at the end of the day is the most important things we can have. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and love for one another. As Christians, we have this tremendous hope. This tremendous hope and this love that God has given to us. Despite all we've done, despite all the things we've done, biblical hope gives us complete assurance. This hope is what is laid up for us in heaven based upon the understanding of God's grace. But understanding of God's grace, which is the anchor for which the Colossian church had great faith in God and love for one another. And let's turn to First Peter. Chapter one. And 
we're going to talk about this great hope that we have. First Peter 1, verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to His abundant mercy has begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible, undefiled, that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, which are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Because of the resurrection of God, because Jesus Christ was resurrected, that's how we have life. And this hope that we have lived on, this hope that we have an inheritance, number one, it is incorruptible. Can you imagine? Let's, let's think about uh, if you could have the best food that you can think of, right? What you like the most. And you had it set before you, and you would eat on it, and you would eat on it, it would never go away. It would always be there. Would that be a good plate of food? I mean, it, it would be incorruptible if, if it would just kept coming back, right? Kept coming back. It's incorruptible, right? Or could you imagine uh, your clothes, the same clothes that you have, you like the best, and it never wore out, it stayed in style, and it, you know, it just, it, was, it, it never was incorruptible. That would make you happy, right? But you think about this. This inheritance that you have, that is left to you. Now, some of you guys, you know what an inheritance is? I mean, uh, some of you parents could leave you some money, or leave you an estate, or leave you this or that as, as an inheritance for just for being their, you know, their kids. This inheritance, and it's earthly. It will fade away. You're going to run out of money one day. Uh, it's, you, uh, you're not going to get any joy from it. Uh, it's, 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 incorru it's corruptible. It's going, to, it's going to fade away. But he's talking about an inheritance that is not uh, going to fade away. This is what he has for you. Heaven. You know, and as kids, we don't think about it that much. We think we just live here. And, 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 and I know, because I was a teenager one time, we were very selfish. Everything we want, everything for us. It's got to go our way, it's got to be done our way. And no matter who it hurts or what it says, that's what we want, right? It's just a fact. But this inheritance that He has for us, is in, it is incorruptible, it is undefiled. And it fadeth not away. See, our clothes will fade away. Our styles, things that bring us happiness here on this earth, they will fade away. It's going to end, guys. It will fade away with me. The things that bring us the most happiness, the things that bring us the most joy are on this earth, right now, it's going to fade away from me. But if our hope is in Jesus Christ, and that's the hope that Paul's talking about, it's incorruptible and it will never fade away. That's the hope. The hope to be in heaven with God for eternity. That hope is what he's talking about here. And that's the same hope. And that should bring joy to you, excitement, knowing that all the things that you go through right now on this earth, they will pass away. It will be done away with one day. But the hope that we have in Jesus Christ, knowing that we're going to spend eternity in heaven. See, as, as kids or, or young people, we, we, we don't, we're not thinking about eternity. We're thinking about what's our next meal. We're thinking about what's the next great movie. What's the next great thing? The next best phone or whatever. That's the thing to think about. Or our next uh, uh, relationship. Those are the things we're thinking about. We're not thinking that way ahead towards the end, which is our great hope. That's what Paul was reminding the Colossians church. Two things. Faith and love. 
is what's going to get you to your great hope. That's the only thing. The love you have for one another, but most of all, your love for the Lord Jesus Christ. Those are the, that is the two things that Paul was bringing out here in Colossians. And he brings out some other things. But those are the two things I wanted to bring out from these verses. So I actually, and notice, notice here he speaks of a hope, a living hope. Why? Because Jesus is risen from the dead. He's alive, therefore, he is our living hope. And as Christians, we should have hope for this life and the next life. Look at what he says. That, this, that there is an inheritance is imperishable, undefiled, and will not fade away. So, the ones of us that put our trust in the earthly treasures, just to find out it would be taken away or lost through the many uncertainty, uncertainties in this world. That which is awaiting the believing in heaven cannot be lost or stolen. It is reserved in heaven for you and I, for the believers in Jesus Christ. It does so good to think of such things. The church has taken its eyes off the heavenly hope and replaced it with the here and the now. And it has taken its eyes off eternity and placed it with temporal things here on earth. So I'm here to tell you guys, as, 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 as many things that, that brings joy and happiness here on earth, treasures, gifts, and things like that, don't get your eyes on it. There's nothing wrong with having these things. But if it takes your eyes off of this great hope, and this, this hope that we have to be in eternity one day with Jesus Christ, then it's best to just do away with it all now. Do away with it now. Don't put your hearts on earthly, earthly treasures. But put your hope in Jesus Christ. Your only hope for the whole world. The only hope for you and I. And I pray you will take advantage of this opportunity that you all have to know Jesus Christ at very young ages. That we can grow in the faith. Grow strong in the Lord. That way when you're going to grow older, and all of these trials and tribulations that are in this world, you will know who to run to when they happen. You will know how to go through all the things. You see, we, we think we're big and macho, guys. You know, we can handle all these things, you know. Now, you know, I, I, I can do anything. I can defeat anything. I can be whatever I want. But you don't know what God has for you yet. So now is the chance to learn God's will for your life. And the number one will... God has for you now is for you to love Him and live for Him. That's God's will for you right now. Start with that. And everything else, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and everything else will walk in line. Everything else. So I want to encourage you with these two words. But Paul was telling the Galatians church, faith and love. Love for one another. Ask the Lord to teach you how to love your brother and sister. Because yes, we'll have situations in our life that will give, give, have arguments or disputes. But it's not worth losing your soul. Work it out. Let the Lord show you how. How to treat one another. And you think about all the past disputes that you have. If you would have just said, I'm sorry. Or, I did wrong. It would have saved you a lot of trouble. And the only way you can learn how to do those things is ask the Lord to show you how. And that's the only way. That's the only way He can give you the, the, uh, the ability to love your brothers and sisters. You think of, the, you think of the, 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 the one person that just gets under your skin. You think about that. We all have them. The one that just gets under your skin. Or he really aggravates you. You think about that. And how do you love them? How do you love that person? How do you do? How do you forgive them? How do you show brotherly love toward that person? You can't do it on your own. 
just like salvation. There's nothing you can do, nothing you can do to earn your salvation. Salvation is a free gift. All you have to do, the Bible says, all you have to do is believe in Jesus Christ, in Jesus Christ, and believe that He's raised from the dead and you're saved. When you put your faith in Jesus Christ, knowing that you don't know how, you don't know how to fix it, I, I, I can't obtain it. If I just put my faith in you, that's the key. Put your faith in Jesus Christ and, and, and move forward. And He will teach you how to love your brother and your sisters. And most of all, teach you how to love God, how to fall in love with Him more and more every day. Those, that's the two important things that you need to do as teenagers. Now, what the God has planned for y'all as, as young men and women, when you will finish high school and y'all get into the world and y'all start uh, providing for your families and, and, and the careers or callings that God has in your life, whatever it is, the foundation to, 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 uh, to being successful is knowing the Lord Jesus Christ. No matter what you do, He'll be with you through it all. No matter what you're going and do. Amen? So, I just want to take up a few moments, guys. You're welcome to come to the altar in your seats. Reflect on those two things. Number one, your relationship with God. And number two, your relationship with your brothers and sisters. That's how people know our love for God. It's how we treat one another. And how we love one another. So take a moment and talk to God. Reconcile anything that you have that's not reconciled. There's sin, unforgiveness. Ask Him to forgive you. Ask Him to forgive you your sins. And ask Him, Sister Jamie, and ask Him, teach me how to love my neighbor. Teach me how to love my brothers and sisters. Show me how. Because I don't know how. Because I mess it up. When I try to do it on my own, I mess it up. And that's what God wants to get out of the way. He wants to get you and I out of the way and let Him show you how to love your brothers and sisters. And everything else will work out. Amen? Take this time and search your hearts.
every one of them, Lord, that you would be with every one, Lord, and that you would strengthen them, Lord, encourage them, Lord, and let them know, Lord, that you love them. You are their heavenly Father, Lord, and Father, you loved us so much, Lord. We thank you for that love you have shown them, Lord. Continue to do so, Lord. Lord, I continue. Lord, continue, Lord, as they keep their eyes on you, Lord, I ask you, Lord, I just to strengthen them, give them the boldness to serve you, Father. Let them not be ashamed of the gospel. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for everything I'm doing. Father, we just thank you, Lord, they're all precious, Lord. And Father, we know, Lord, you have them here, Lord, at this time, Lord, in their lives, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity, Lord, to know them and to encourage them. We just thank you, Father. Your day, Lord, go according to your will, Lord, your purpose, Lord, and they get to learn about you, Lord, and we're closer to you, Lord. We thank you for that, Lord. And Father, I just pray, Lord, that we continue to grow, Lord, in your love and your grace that you have given them, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for what you've done, Lord, writing our names in the book of life. Thank you. And Lord, let us keep our minds on the, on the hope that we have, that heavenly hope that we have. Let them be reminded that every day, Lord, that they're not, they're not just here to live on this earth, Lord, but they're living, they're part time here, Lord, and knowing you know, that our, our eternal destination, Lord, is in heaven, Lord, to be forever with you, Lord, constantly reminded of that. So that way they would never lose hope. They would never want to give up. Lord, not just pray, Lord. For everyone, Lord, that they would continue, Lord, to grow in you and your grace, Father. And Father, help us, Lord, to show them and be examples for these young children. Lord, we thank you for that. And Father, we ask you this, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. And y'all just